Yeah, I think I'm gonna be taking an actual break soon, cause... The fucking music is tearing me apart. <laughs> and the situation in general is, uh... It's very intense. Like, this is work work. This is something that will eventually burn you out and make you feel tired. If you do it every single day without a break... Uh, like, as much as I make videos out of it, making videos out of it does not magically make it less, uh, work. Um, so last time we stopped off right here. Uh, let's go for it. I got a bar of M&M's and Snickers, just in case I feel like I... Passionate. Let's find a good word for passionate. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, so, last time I ranted a bit about Lorem, and I think that might also be why there's not much wind in my sails nowadays. But hey, let's can do this. I had a rare dream last night. I had a dream about Prey, even though I don't have the game and never played it. About being on a space station having to shoot a bunch of dudes. Which actually kind of accumulates with what Dead Space 3 was, where when you're in space, there's just an endless supply of dudes. And I also dreamt, for some odd reason, about having to find and buy a Dodge, some, a Ford Dodge or something? I don't even know if that's a real car. And there was this really nice man who offered me some food. And I was constantly off kilter because it kind of was like a redneck man. And it was very similar to, 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 to that, that biohazard game. But it wasn't anything like it. It was just a nice man. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I'm in space and suddenly I'm <laughs> in a place and the man with a junkyard lives in a road. God damn, what a dream. I love it. I love how stupid it was. I can't even. I can't even. So here's my problem with this. Sorry, um, he more says I like humans a lot. I love humans, and that's uh, that's reason enough. It kind of kind of takes the idea. It might recontextualize it a bit, but it's not a major reason. It's like yeah, I like humans, and that's that's good enough. But this I don't get at all. Like you say, if you search. Like, I don't know. Like, doesn't this also imply you're in on this? Why are there no specific options? Wouldn't you be like, listen, uh, like, I'm too full for this. Which is fine, because uh, usually I'm kind of hungry. But yeah, like, this is what I hate. Is It's just this. It's no response. Like, come on, you would say something about this. Like, here he's normal. He's like, yeah, for good. Like, at least, like, I don't know, make some emotions change. Like, have his expression change with each of these, and then have him at the end be normal again? Or something? I don't know. But this is... this is nothing. This is what people complain about when they say that their, that their choices don't matter. This is less than that. This isn't even an extra dialogue option for picking an option. It's just nothing. It's a point. You get a point for picking the good guy option. Congratulations. The rest does nothing. Man, I really love that video where the guy slaps that gun out of his hand. He's like, because <laughs> he's doing a, it's a guy who does a lot of parodies on Tumblr and YouTube and all that. And then he pulls out a second gun. And he's like, luckily I always carry a second. <laughs> which, which really just captures the problem with offering dialogue options and not following up on them. It just looks so stupid. I like how this is entirely an option. Like, similar to a teen where you talk about the end of the world and our dragons are signs of the apocalypse, you can sort of hint that you're an asshole and be an <laughs> Like, it's so great. But, again, it just feels like Lorem's dates take a lot of control out of your hand. Like, it's not about you, it's about Lorem. And that, to me, is annoying. <laughs> you're not interfacing with the characters, what I'm trying to say. It doesn't feel like you're interfacing with them. You're not building the proper bridges and building the proper adapters. You need to build a facade. And other such words used in programming... I don't know, patterns. I think they're called patterns. Yeah, patterns. The guy who taught me that had a very, very stressful thing. Patterns. These are patterns. 
I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, that's not how you put the stress on that vowel. It's patterns, not patterns. What the fuck are you planning to do then, Lorm? If this guy literally said you can possibly not trust me, and you're like, oh, well, I'm still going to take his opinion for granted. See, this is the problem I have. In a proper setup, you'd be like, how do you know you can trust me at all? It would be, it would be the... Uh, missed opportunities is all this is, because it just feels like it's about Lorm. It's about what he is, and he wants to do, and what his Ipsum friend is like, which I understand is how backer characters tend to pan out, but... Ugh. Say what I want about Kevin. But at least Kevin tries to be like something else. Although he's boring as fucking, it just doesn't work. Mm, it doesn't work. Mm. What if it turns out that Sebastian was like a cutting character? Ooh. Like, come on, Lauren, why the fuck are you being this goddamn scientific? You're boring as fuck as a result. Like, even Anna lets your emotions creep in. At least he doesn't... Like, he'd probably be worse if he says, but I also have some conscious opinions. Like, he's gonna be that scientific. That would be the worst. This is written exactly as pretentious as this sentence is. So it works out! Although it might be a bit more pretentious, but it works better as a result. Oh, wait, wait, no, that's the question. Portrayals. Betrayal. One problem with this that I have is there's one human. One. That is Izumi. They have this whole thing about humans, but there's only one. And she's Asian, and she has hair problems over the course of the game. <laughs> so, all that considered... Uh, what if the player is black or peach white? Like, wouldn't that go against what Izumi is? Let's see if this uh, saying can also... Sprechten selber, Sweigen ist gut. Das Sweigen ist gut. Need to find something good that works here. Hmm. Maybe, maybe second is better. That's such a farmer thing to say. Why is this one here twice? Why is this one here twice? I mean, these are literally the same. This one at least has some problems, some differences. Oh, it looks okay. Okay, this is where it looks for the actual okay, and here it looks specifically for okay. Heart wearing your he wearing your heart on your tongue. That's a great one. Immediately say what you think. I think we just saw that one actually.
Show someone the hole of the door. Saying someone has to fucking leave already. I like these. These are great. Oh my god, I love how the dialects are there too. Okay, so it goes up to 50 in a very awkward fashion too. But I think I like that other one that we found. I think I'm fine. I think I'll just do something else. Oh, this works great, because this can be interpreted both ways. So this sentence is, I don't know if I can leave everything with you, and that ties in nicely into the, oh yeah. If only for my wrist's sake. Ugh. My wrist is so... Uh, it's... Oh no. I'm so sad. I'm a sad wrist. Uh. I want to do at least 50%. Just to get some headway. So, here's my fucking problem. I understand that the point is that Lorm is just talking his fucking ass off like an idiot. This sentence should have been an option, or could have been an option, where you point out Lorm, you fucking asshole. I'm sitting here, and I'm not that mythical. And nothing. Nothing. It's just an offhand comment that I feel the producer, that the, the developer put in. He was like, listen, this, no, no. I want to know the discussions behind this. Because whatever happened, it didn't go anywhere. I don't know if you put this then over here. Well then. Like, it sounds a lot more assertive. And here it's a lot weaker. And if you remove the well, then it also makes the sense a bit stronger. Like, that's weird, isn't it? How a couple of words shifted around can change the actual idea. I mean, this sentence on its own just works. But then these little words add... You know, modifiers. This one sounds like this one sounds, mm -hmm. but this one sounds. Oh yes, mythical creatures like humans, of course. <laughs> like it sounds like you're giggling a bit. It sounds like you're chuckling between your teeth. <laughs> you fucking moron! I should deck you. Not that violent, but the idea is there. Of like, Jesus, Lorm, you're talking too much. You're not thinking enough. Which really seems to be the mainstay of his fucking. He talk, like, he thinks way too well for what he's doing. Lorem does not seem like the kind of person to have the kind of experience within which he would develop this kind of very fluent social interactions. Because he talks very good for someone who has shit relationships! God fucking damn it, Lorem! I have shit relationships. I try to sound and have to explain things as directly as possible. Even I don't talk like this much of a dork. Like, god damn! It's so much writing. More than it's talking. Like, organically, people leave words out, or they talk a certain way, and Lorem sounds like he's reading from a script. Which, I mean, is kind of the point. Like, you don't want to keep it readable. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like there's any characteristic to it, other than that he says too many fancy words sometimes that really don't need to be there, and don't really have to be there. Not to mention he's being inconsiderate for someone who should probably know how to be considerate, considering his history! Like, there's so many contradictions in his character at some points. 
<sighs> I'm just angry. And it's probably because I'm not feeling great. Because my wrist is acting up. That having been said, I was not this angry with the Dean or with Seb, so... Maybe things will get better when I get to the next character. What am I gonna do next anyway? Who will be in a fun next character? Uh, I like Anna. And I also like Bryce. I think I'm gonna do Bryce. Because Bryce is very good chatty chat. Like, it's just fucking shit-faced McGee. A good middle point. A good middle point. So you're essentially making Animal Crossing. You're just making Animal Crossing with humans in it. What the fuck? Again, relieved is so sad. Like a couple of times I look at these names and I'm like, that's not really what you would call that. No, I don't know what to think of it. Also, all of these are defined in uh, images. So, holy shit, he had to write all those shits down. Ooh, ooh. I usually think back on what I would make if now, like, don't think I knew any better back then. Back then I was a little shit, and I've said this a hundred fucking times. Ophinia's uh, character line would focus extremely hard on you having to be interesting, to tolerate her, essentially, because she would be annoying and aggravating. But there's something to her that's hard to write, and oh boy, is that nearly impossible to pull off without a hitch. But the whole point is, she's something else, and you have to sort of want it, and you have to work with it, and you have to work for it. Because, like, it's better to insult her than to be boring, is the point. Because she can take it, because she doesn't give a shit what you say. It's all about the jokes and the, and the gags and the fun. Because she's in a bad spot. She doesn't want to be reminded of the boring and mundanity of life at times. And that works very fine. So there's a point to the conversation. The conversation is knowing what she wants to hear instead of what you want to say, more than anything. Because you have to be an ass sometimes, and she thinks, oh, that's great. That's great. Ah, you got such chops on you. Ooh, those guts. Ooh. But as things go on, and as she becomes more open and emotional, that starts to work against you, because suddenly she wants someone that's serious, that actually talks to her and accepts her and, and sort of deals with her as a person, instead of her as a character. And that creates this interesting conflict where you have to sort of anticipate someone's emotional state, and it's possible to read, like there would be subtle cues of her sort of going... and being less... Less forward. Like, her own personal assertiveness and aggressiveness in the conversation, as it goes down, you have to sort of play along with it. Which would lead to interesting conversation and dialogue options. Instead of you saying, Wow, Lorm, what an exciting video game! And you get sad. This is a clumsy thing to say because I know how the fuck to put it.
think that works? I, I like I like to think the sentence is kind of snarky. It's like, what other mythical creatures are there besides him? Like, he still doesn't address this! Oh, here we go. The mythical human. Like, I understand there's a mythical side to humans because you have the culture. But you want to present real humans! If a dragon shows up in front of me and I decide to make a video game about that, I'm not going to write about the mythical dragon. I'm going to write about that motherfucker sitting there who is not a mythical dragon. So Jesus Christ, Lauren, what is wrong with you? You don't understand the context of your own idea. Ah. Oh. Like, he never second doubts himself, either. Like, Lorem seems completely certain with every fucking thing he says. And that makes him annoying. <laughs> because he's making mistakes. And your character points out Lorem like, ah, that's gone. I know, I get the point is that he's talking. He's talking, he's talking. He doesn't want to be confronted with it because he doesn't want to be an asshole because he doesn't want to make friends or something. But something about this just doesn't feel right. There's this disconnect. There's this, this incorporeal thing this, this lack of oil to make the juice come out. Which is very stupid to say because oil and juice are contradictory concepts. Oil is the stuff that makes the game work well that you only really notice if it's not there. And juice is the stuff that makes the stuff that is already there look a little bit spicier. The juice is the screen shake and the vibration as you destroy something. The oil is that the camera doesn't fucking shove its way up your ass whenever you try to look up. Like, I love this part, too. Like, Lorem has no fucking clue what he's doing! Oh, I've not really thought ahead. The core premise of my game haven't given it- God. Why are we still talking to him? Why aren't we allowed to step out of the conversation? Because he clearly is too obsessed with humans. That's his point. Like, it feels like he invented this whole game as an excuse to meet you, if anything. Wouldn't he have worked this out already? He doesn't need to research humans. He could have had all this time to, to learn up on dragon mythical creatures. He did none of that. He was just, oh, maybe he was working on humans all this time. But, you know, uh, it feels like it would be smarter to do some of the preamble that he knows he's never getting any updates on. Like things that are not likely to exist ever. I don't know. It just feels kind of dumb. Also, who is this us? Isn't it implied that Lorem is an independent developer? Like, who is this us? Or did he have like... No, yeah, it's, I think it's implied that he does everything on his own, isn't it? Like, oh my god, this sentence. Like, why does Lorem act as a plot dump? Like, Kevin's a plot dump, but it kind of at least makes sense for his character because he works at a college and he's, like, doing something that he's interested in. Lorem's interested, in, yes, but then he shifts to humans, and it just... Mm, I guess it works, but at the same time, he's a main dating character, and we barely know him, and he's plot dumping us already. Breath of the Wild gets away with it because you never connect with anyone. Except maybe Kaz, because you're one of those weirdos. Kaz. Which sounds like Kaz. Which is cheese. Hello, cheese bird. I'm gonna spread you on this sandwich. Mmm, that's some good cheese. And he's just like, where the fuck did my leg go? How did he not notice his leg going away? He's probably too busy flying. I can't imagine those feather wings, wing finger feathers, having the ability to manipulate an accordion, though. Why didn't he just sing? I mean, he's a burp. He should sing more and use less accordion. Why an accordion, anyway? I know it's a wind instrument, so it makes sense for a burp, but... I don't know. I guess it is one you could easily play without your mouth, so... And a violin might be harder to do. And heck, it sticks to his hands.
Someone just moved upstairs, which means I have to be quiet, which means these rants are gonna be whispered aggressively! Like, no one talks like this. No one fucking talks like this. No one is going to say, in general, the mythical human can be divided into three. You're not a college teacher, Lorem. You're not giving a presentation unless you specifically rehearse this, which is never talked about. You're not going to talk like this. What you're going to say is, well, generally speaking, there's three different ways you can look at it. You're not going to say, in general, the mythical human can be divided into three categories. That sounds like you read it out of a book and then stopped and then said, I want to talk to someone about this. And even then, gave it your own spin, because because it's in a book, it's probably not good for direct interpretation. Like, this feels too much like reading and not much like talking, which is a translation. Like, isn't that funny? Like, when you write something down as pure fact, it's not something someone would ever say like that. Like, even your college teacher isn't going to speak like this. He's going to give it his own spin. This is the shit that's on the, on the whiteboard behind him, but not the shit he's going to say, because this is flat and boring, and brains don't hold on to something this boring. You gotta give it a spin, you gotta give it some, some sway, some rhythm, some emotion. Something human and attachable, something mnemonic. Not something that's just the flat information. Humans talk, humans remember talking. Book learning is not in our genes, but talking is. So talk, don't book word. And that's kind of irritating. Also the fact that it's three different kinds, which kind of reflects the trinity, doesn't it? There's the dude, the non-dude, and the spiritual dude, which sounds a lot like the Trinity. Fun fact, did you know the church kind of broke apart over trying to figure out what the fuck the Trinity is? Like, my god. The Trinity. What's with threes? What's with the rule of threes? Fun fact, you don't have to stick to the rule of threes, you can just make two or four or five. Uneven numbers are great because that way you know when you're across halfway, but you're never just halfway. Man, picking your numbers is hard. non-physical, like non-corporeal, but that begs the question, how do you translate that? Like, what about this part, though? This part's very awkward. Izumi does not turn into a dragon. Izumi hangs out and then vanishes. Like, why this part? Who made this up and why? Like, I imagine that there's just some dragon who, after being made by Izumi, Izumi's just like, goodbye, I'm gonna go home, shit, gosh, later. Some dragon should have looked, I'm Izumi now. <laughs> like, that's what happened. Like, someone pretended, like, that's entirely possible. Like, someone went into Jesus' cave and then came out and said, hey, I'm Jesus. That, that corpse in the cave is someone else, but I'm Jesus. He didn't even clean up the corpse. That's what a jackass was. That could have totally happened. I'm not saying it did. I'm not saying... But it's a possibility. And that makes the story super fucking sad. <laughs> because the dragons are clearly smart enough at this point to know better than that. They were raised by a blue-collar worker with some pretty advanced technology, some pretty advanced education. Who would probably make them smart enough to think critically about that sort of situation. And yet here they are, accepting that some random-ass dragon goes, I'm Izumi! Isn't Izumi like a girl? <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, the oh, maybe.
I mean, I guess the music works for something that's this freaking bookwordy. That's so weird, though. I mean, I guess books were always designed just to capture information. They were meant to capture facts, not in not impressions. There's a reason we can't express certain concepts and ideas, such as what red actually looks like, what blue actually looks like. That's a funny thing to think about. But that also brings you to the question, why the fuck does this guy talk like a book? I mean, it makes sense from the context that, yes, he does has no social... Like, the problem is he, he shifts between having the social nuance to, to talk certain ways and, and, and manipulate situations, but at the same time not having the social context to know how to talk. Despite the fact that he's a mailman and has probably addressed multiple... Actually, that would make him more likely to start rehearsing things. Yeah, that would. But that doesn't make him likable. Like, say what you want, but some people are unlikable, period. There's no redeeming factor. They are just unpleasant to be with. Those people exist. You can't romanticize those kinds of people, or you start setting up expectations you should not. There's a reason people get upset when you start romanticizing bad boys. Bad boys are assholes. Yes, they're appealing because they're dominant and they exhibit certain traits that the woman's structure is made to find interesting because they lead to good progeny, but that doesn't mean you should idolize it because it's bad. In modern society, the bad boy is not good. He's not going to get the money in. He's not going to be a stable family man. He's not going to deliver on those aspects. Back in the day, maybe, when having one dude around who could hunt very well was a great idea, but not nowadays. I don't know. Like, some things just are bad. Stop idolizing them. Stop make, stop pretending there's redeeming factors to that. This guy is a boring book learner. Present him with someone that is not also somewhat inclined to try and date him, as is the premise of the majority of this. <laughs> like, say what you want, but if you start out as Dragon Dating Simulator, you cannot, under any circumstances, wiggle your way out of that by having a character who you're just buddy-buddy with without setting that premise up straight from the get-go. Like, Lorem doesn't start being like, listen, we just need to stay buddy-buddy until the end, which is way late at that point. You already saved his life, for fuck's sake. I think he's like the, the one character you directly save, other than, than Bryce, who you sort of nudge aside. And I guess Adine, but you just tell her not to be a stupid moron about it. Lorem is the one you literally save. Wouldn't you have, like, the fireman principle going on or something? Like, people usually marry the fireman that saves them because, you know, there's that strong emotional connection. Lorem is none of that. Lorem is an asexual or aromantic person, which makes him kind of terrible for the position, and explains why Ipsum takes up so much of the role. And I guess that's why nothing happens. Because the person who made him doesn't want Lorem to do anything. And that makes him terrible for the role. I mean, I understand that, yes, there's a lot of lore already, you can build on that. But that's not the point of what the slot is for. It's supposed to be a character that you build a relationship or some sort of connection to. That's the idea behind it, you get to know someone, that's the point of the story. And you can't do that if the character is specifically written to not have either of those. He's not romantically interested, he's not sexually interested, he's not physically interested, he is not interested. All you can be is friends. Making friends is easy! It does not take four different dates and saving someone's life to be a friend of someone! Why? I mean, it explains why everything's so boring, but it makes for such a shitty bit of gameplay. Also, I managed to stay moderately quiet. Other than the fact that I'm spitting on everything because I just can't stop spit. Jesus, man, I can't take this anymore. So much spit. Ugh. Also, why does Lorem directly counter the statement? If he's supposed to be autistic, who would probably answer that question because it's a joke answer? Like, here's the thing. This particular sentence can mean a lot of things. Someone who's autistic, who is not socially conscious, would literally answer that question on, does this count? If he's joking, he doesn't give that impression. But he's not autistic because, sure, he talks a bit funny, but he doesn't display any of the attributes related to it. He is way too socially conscious for that. Which makes the question, why would he answer a rhetorical answer? I don't know. I don't get this. I'm confused. Like, what, what, what is the idea? What was the grand idea behind him, anyway? Like, the one thing, and this is probably the most I'm going to give him credit until I do the other dates, is that 
Ipsum not wanting to testify is tied into Lorem dying. Is probably the only part of Lorem's story that I was like, that's pretty cool, because this character that wouldn't be here without him has a relation and has influence in the story, but at the same time, Ipsum doesn't do anything, so I guess he's not relevant, which means that this whole thing, which is kind of cool, is not that interesting or cool because it doesn't do anything. People like results. People like seeing things happen. Action and reaction is an important part of our lives, and not seeing any of that is something we have in daily life. So having a character that we see no results with that's annoying and frustrating, because it means that all that effort we put in was for naught. We have a friend, yay, but we could have been friends without any of the preamble. Also, why is Lorem impressed and abandoned? If he's not interested in dating, he wouldn't be pursuing a romantic relationship, and thus would not be as easy to judge. Like, he just wants to be friends. I mean, sure, he's likely to overestimate him, like, oh, guess, but his thing is such a physical thing, and you can't know, like, uh, I don't know. Like, that's the thing, isn't it? <sighs> I should just stop. I'm just ranting. I'm angry. I should just do this off-screen. Like, I don't think anything is going to come up that's interesting to talk about from a translation perspective, because so much of this is just straightforward, factual talk. It is the straightest, most boring, most square writing. And that is easy to translate, but that also means there's nothing to talk about except what I feel about these things, which is boring. I'm going to do this off screen. Fuck you, Lorem. You are this aggravating that your first date has made me say, I'm not going to record this because there's nothing to talk about that's interesting enough to justify me getting angry all the time. I hope you're happy. You're probably not. Let's just go to the final thing in poop and then call it a quit, and I'll do the rest off screen. And we'll do Bryce tomorrow, and then maybe I'll realize that Bryce is not as good as I thought he was. He probably isn't. After this, I don't think I'm going to be happy with anyone. Or am I? We'll see. It'll be great. What the fuck is this? Like, again, this is, like, this is not Lorem. Why does it say, but? I see you don't have wings, but most of us have... Here, here's, here's... The writer of this story uses but when he should not. Buts are contradictions! You use but or mar or... They are contradictions. They are statements you use when the prior statement is contradictory to what you're saying next. Like, you could say, I see you don't have wings, but some of us don't have wings either, you know? Like, that's not a point. The point is, Megnir's, I don't see you have wings. you think he would go on about how wings are good, or what wings are about. But that doesn't tie into fire breath weapons. Also, they're called breath weapons. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that's about. Adam Baba. That sounds so stupid in Dutch, though. Ooh. Actually, it sounds alright. Oh well. My point is... Also, Goldkin is in, like, multiple chats, but he says nothing. Like, he's just silent. I don't know what that's about. Um, ah, my neck. Is that a correct use of but, though? Like, it might be. Like, maybe you can use but as a replacement for and if you're moving on to a different statement. Like, I can see this working. But the, the context isn't established. Why is this but significant? Like, you could say, um... Like, I guess... Okay, I guess the, the context is that they're similar. And that's the point. But the problem is, I don't see anything that links this but. Mm, the more I think about it, the more it kind of makes sense. Or maybe I'm just trying to fool myself. But I don't think this works. It could be done better. Like, you could say, but besides that, so, like, but, but besides establishes what the butt is trying to contradict. You don't have wings, but another similarity we might have is that we have breath weapons. Establish the contradiction instead of interpreting it. You need to say why something is being compared or contradicted with something else, or no one knows what the hell you're talking about. Like, it's clumsy on your first way through. Like, you need to remember this context, but then you need to remember the specifics of the context, which is you're trying to figure out similarities. I don't know. I just feel that if you make it but, bes but besides, but besides that, it just works very well.
Also, I don't think it's ever implied that any breath weapon other than fire exists. Like, none of them have acid or ice or anything, even though that's something that it happens in the RP, which is, by the way, dying, because no one has any ideas, as was predicted, although a month early. I'm kinda happy, because f fuck that verse. I'm sick of it. And to be honest, I have ideas, but they mostly were all around resetting the character, which is a bad thing, because it shows that, you know... I feel bad, though. Also, this is really awkward. It implies that some dragons can fart fire or have laser vision because he later specifies breath weapons, implying the dragons have other ways of making fire. And he says rubbing sticks together doesn't count. Like, there's something really awkward about that sentence that bugs me every single way. But maybe that's just a part of English I've never encountered before. It's entirely possible. Think about breath. I guess. I guess this does imply there are other types of breath weapon, and that's sort of the idea that it's going for. But then it should be, but at least have some kind of breath weapon. You know? Like, specify that you're talking about a diversity of breath weapons, instead of, I don't know, it's such a messy sentence. I'm gonna stop here. I'm just way too frustrated. Lorm, you're gonna get done off-screen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, that's just the thing shifting. I'm done. I just can't handle this. I can't handle this. This is frustrating and grinding. I don't know who wrote this. Like... There, are, like, I can imagine that the writer was, that the creator was just told, you can use my characters, here's some details, write something. Here's some limitations I put on writing about my character. And he stopped. And that would imply that all of this was made with gentle gloves. The creator was extra careful and took extra precaution not to cross those thresholds. But as a result, wrote a less interesting story because he was trying too careful to meet up to those expectations. It could be possible that Goldkin himself had massive influence in the process and was the one who wrote this terrible story. Or maybe it's a cooperation in which the two of them were unsure what to do. Like, I want to assume the best, that this was just a misunderstanding and there was room for a better story and they just never got to it or didn't have the time, or Lorem's story was made at the end and they were rushing things anyway. There are a lot of options that explain why this doesn't feel as good as it could be, because there is a possibility for a story. Like, even if it's not about romance or, or love or, or sex or anything, I already talked about how there could be a story where you have to force your way into Lorem's life because he's used to pushing people away because they get angry or they become bullies or because they laugh at him for being what he is. You can write a good story with that. But the interactions are not conducive to that story, to that arc, to that character trait. And that's what bothers me. The options here are jokey option and <laughs> here's another jokey option and another jokey option. For some reason, one jokey option makes him feel bad about himself. And now he's super serious. For someone who's super nervous, who kind of seems to fuck around for the most part of it, I don't know. Lorem doesn't seem like someone who should be that serious, considering he shows up nude. Don't dragons have, like, a hat or something? Like, you meet up at a bar. You don't even meet up in that good of a place for this. If he was that serious, wouldn't you meet up at, like, a restaurant or something? <sighs> like this, again, this kind of straightforwardness is very much in indicating something. And if that, but that's not the case, because if it was, wouldn't it come up? Because that's a character detail you'd probably want to mention to your, to your reader or something, I don't know. He gets so mad about that. Why is he so mad about that, though? It's just a joke. Oh, and here again, you get some empty options. Also, this is the thing that just bugs me in general, is inconsistent spacing. Like, from time to time, the spacing is two white lines between menus, and other times it's one. And sometimes none at all, and it's just kind of weird. Oh well. Next time, Bryce. Maybe I can tolerate that one. Because I... The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to just be ranting all the time. It gets in the way of me f fucking writing this shit. I need to translate! I need to localize! I have a job to do that's not me talking! Ah! <laughs> 
Why well, isn't Lorem in the comics like a mute little shit? Like, what the heckles? What the heckles?